Now we're going to look at our output section of the board. Um, there's multiple ways to get out of the board and a lot of ways to route things within the board. Um, the most easiest one is our stereo fader or our master fader. That's this guy. And that's just automatically set up where anything we dial up, any of our inputs, you bring the fader up, it's going to spit it over to that stereo fader so long as you're sending it there through this section. So if we select the input we want, we can look at this section, we see main stereo is lit up. That means that we're sending it over there. If we didn't want to send it there, we could kill that and no sound from this channel would be going to our stereo fader. But let's turn that on. You can also route it to the mono center channel. Usually we'll put our subwoofer on that channel. We'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, so that's the easiest one. So in addition to the stereo fader out of the board, we have buses which pretty much act the same way except that they're mono channels rather than being stereo on a single fader. Uh, so the buses, we have one through eight on one bank and then nine through 12. And then we have four at the end that are specialty just for the effects unit built into the board. And we'll get into that in another video. Uh, so buses are just places that you can route your audio to. And then the output of the bus can be routed somewhere as well. So most commonly we're using those for monitor mixes. So in the loft, we'll have monitors one through four on buses one through four. And these are the master volumes for those. We'll dial those up. Um, and then those will spit physically out the back of the board, channels one through four. And then those will get patched into the monitor amps and we'll send signal to the monitors. So that's the most common use for these guys. You can also use them to send for uh, record feeds if you want to do that. You can send them to other speakers in the room. You can use it to send to the subwoofers if you want. Um, there's all kinds of different things, but it's basically a place that you'll send audio to, and then that'll get spit out the back of the board. Uh, the way that we do that, there's a couple different ways that we can send things on the board. Uh, the first, the one that's most easiest, is if we have, say we have an artist standing in front of uh, monitor number one. They're like, hey, I want some more trumpet in my monitor. So we're going to select the monitor we want, monitor number one. Then we're going to hit this fader flip button. And now what that does is it, is it turns all of these faders, instead of sending out to the stereo fader, like they're doing here, they're now going to be sending into this mix bus number one, since we have it selected. So let's dial up the trumpet, let's say that's channel nine, bring that sucker up. So now that is sending over to mix bus one, which is spitting out output one, which is going to monitor one. Whenever we're done, fader flip again, and now we're looking at our main mix again. And this is what's going to be coming out of the PA. Um, the other way that you can do that is say we have four artists on stage in front of the four monitors and all of them say, hey, I want some trumpet in my wedge. So instead of going one by one and sending the trumpet to those, we can select the trumpet channel, channel nine, hit the fader flip. And now any of these buses, when we bring them up, it's going to be sending channel nine over to them. So you can kind of work in either way. It works back and forth. So now we dial the trumpet. So it's a trumpet for the drummer, this kind of thing. And there we go. Now, if they ask for like, they want some French horn, hit the French horn channel, dial that sucker up. So that's how the fader flip operates. You can do it either way. You can either select the bus that you want and then route all the channels to your bus or select the channel that you want and now that channel is going to be routed to anything you do over here. The other way that we can do it is through these encoders up here. This may be easier for some people prefer different ways. There's no better or worse way to do it. Um, and these are just operate pretty much the same way, but with the knobs instead of with the faders. So what we'll do is artist wants uh, more trumpet in their wedge, select the trumpet. And now we're looking at which mixes we're sending it to. So it's one through four, five through eight, nine through 12 and the effects ones. So you see these are all lit up already because we've already routed it with our fader flip. But if we turn those off, now the lights go away. So now we can route to mix three, route it to mix one. And those are pretty much the two ways that you'll route things over to buses. So the last way out of the board is the section called the matrices. You have six of them here. And what these typically are is they will, they will follow the stereo fader. So the master fader is send whatever you want to that, that's sending that to your PA. And then if we want to send that same signal 
to some other areas, like we have front fill speakers or we have delay speakers on the side or something like that, you use these for that. So we'll select the stereo fader, we'll hit fader flip, and now we're sending that to our matrices. And this is useful because if you know you have your front fills and you basically want exactly what's going into the two mains also into your front fill, instead of having to dial up every channel to send over to a bus, you can just follow the stereo fader and then everything that's sent into the mains will also be sent to the matrix. Uh, these are good for records too. That way anything you're doing in the PA um, will be sent to like a record feed out to somebody's Zoom recorder or something like that. So that's what these are good for. And that is pretty much it for outputs out of the board.